you couldn't well, reach your full potential. You could tell that you weren't playing as great as you did yeah, before because of your injuries. And then Daniel Hiram Gibson, born February 27th, 1986. Today's feature is one of those unique stories that make me love what I do. Something about his character is very genuine and makes you appreciate his story, even as low as it got at times. A guy that came from the bottom as a basketball player, worked extremely hard, got to the top levels, and was able to secure a future for his family and himself. The other components to such a player's story is where I can be of assistance and maybe help guide a future hooper going down the same darker side of that path. There's a saying, money doesn't buy happiness, and for a lot of people, that is true. As a former second round pick that earned a $21 million contract extension, this couldn't hit closer to home. A person that values family, connections, and is a country boy to his core, as he puts it, monetary gains most times took a back burner to his mental health and he found himself struggling with a few losses that were eventually too much for him to continue playing a game he once called his sanctuary. He's a father, been to the NBA Finals, played with multiple legends and future Hall of Famers, and was one of the best shooters of his era on the biggest stage in basketball. Yet and still, mentally, he struggled with anxiety, depression, and even thought of taking his own life. I have a lot of respect for Daniel Gibson. As a non-witness, I even hated him from time to time because he was so clutch for LeBron over the years as I watched LeBron set him up for daggers on daggers to defeat opposing teams. He was expected to become a big time player, being a McDonald's All-American leaving high school. Then he wasn't as a second round pick. Then he was again upon seeing how deadly a shooter he was from deep that even had a season shooting 47% from three. In his seven seasons, he averaged 40% from there, attempting over three a game. Also, after just seven seasons, he was out of the league, sunken mentally, and basically, outside the ones that watch reality TV, disappeared from the world publicly. Here are the real reasons Daniel Booby Gibson quit the NBA at just 26 years old. Salute to Cav on YouTube for this request. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Ash, get it, man. Booby Gibson is a 6'2 point guard shooting guard from Houston, Texas that became a star in high school and led his team to a state championship as a senior, the first since 1965. He was a McDonald's All-American that averaged 25 points and 9 assists. He was heavily recruited by Southern schools but chose the University of Texas in order to be close to his family and connections mentioned earlier. Along with LaMarcus Aldridge and P.J. Tucker, he helped continue the program's tradition of winning games and averaged a team leading 14 points and 4 assists as a freshman. As a sophomore, the team made the tournament once again and made it to the Elite Eight behind Texas's Big Three, including Gibson. With superstar Kevin Durant coming in the next season, Gibson opted to try his hand at the NBA. Stunt number one, injuries. I've had to endure a lot. I tore a tendon in my foot. I wasn't able to work out. I hurt my back. And then from that point, I hurt my knee. Just an onslaught of injuries. Now bear with me, because Daniel Gibson's story had a lot going on, although it ended abruptly, beginning at 20 and ending at 26. Also, because it seemed everything for him, as far as his descent, came all at once. Gibson would have a pre-draft workout for the Cavaliers and after the workout refused to work out for any other team because the mutual feeling the franchise and player shared that he was their guy. It may have been the reason he slipped to the second round after he was projected to be a mid to late first round pick. Cleveland took him at 42 in the 2006 NBA draft which will be heading a new series I have coming so stay tuned for that. 
Out the gate, Booby struggled with minor injuries that only allowed him to play 60 games as a rookie, but was very instrumental in helping the Cavaliers and LeBron James to his first NBA Finals appearance. In his second season, he missed 18 games due to an ankle injury that would be very key to his longevity, seeing as he credits the lingering effects as a reason depression hit him so hard not being able to play or work out on his bad ankle. He averaged 10 points and shot 44% from 3 in year 2 as the Cavaliers lost in round 2 of the playoffs. The following season, he played the most games of his career at 75, but production dipped drastically due to his ankle progressively getting worse, causing him to have surgery before the season. He averaged 7 points and 38% from 3 in 08-09 after shooting over 40 for his first two seasons. In 2009-2010, he played just 56 games as his scoring dipped again along with his assists and usage, mostly due to his ankle not being 100%. In 2010-2011, he had the best season statistically, averaging a career-high 11 points, 3 assists, and shooting 40% from 3 once again, albeit the season after LeBron took his talents to South Beach and the Cavaliers went 19-63 and and missed the playoffs. During the 2011-2012 season, he tore a tendon in his ankle and only played 35 games. It was this injury that continued into the next season as he tried to play through it, playing 46 games. Because of the injury and him being sidelined, he couldn't work out, had gotten out of shape, and with everything else going on, mentally and physically, just couldn't go any longer. I do have the option of playing in the league, but I went through some serious injuries. I felt like I couldn't play at the level I wanted to, Mm -hmm. and that's painful. Stunt number two, life began taking hold. On top of the nagging injuries that saw him play just 46 games in 2012-2013 and average just 5 points a game, Gibson was at the point of sitting out some time to let his injuries heal. He also began going through a trying separation and divorce beginning soon after getting married in 2011. He and singer Keisha Cole began dating in 2009 and had a son together the next year. After getting married, the two couldn't see eye to eye on certain issues and after three years decided to get a divorce. One that wouldn't finalize until 2020. Daniel took this hard and even though he accepted his role in the separation, it took a toll on him mentally and without basketball to escape, he had his first bout with anxiety and depression. He was also grieving the death of his grandmother, whom he'd lived with at the time, that was obviously close to him. Media in the reality TV world began taking sides between he and former wife, leading to shots taken at his character, that he was a deadbeat father, carried on multiple extramarital affairs, and even being abusive, which by all accounts are false. With everything going on and him sitting at the time after surgeries to repair his ankle, things took a turn for the worse when he began contemplating suicide, stating, I got to the point being alive wasn't something I wanted anymore. This proved to be too much and along with not being in great basketball shape, he decided to leave the game at just 26. Stunt number three, as far as basketball. The final stunt in Daniel's growth, in my opinion, is one that actually has to do with basketball. I must preference this by saying, had it not been for injuries he suffered, even with what I'm about to say, I think Gibson would have easily lasted 15 years in the league with how great of a shooter and complimentary piece he was. But I've always thought playing the two guard opposed to point guard at just 6'2 would be a problem for him going forward and could have been the reason he didn't have great success scoring wise in the league. Yes, he was a sharpshooter, but he was also a liability on defense as many would be at that size trying to guard, let's say, Kobe. He's been playing both guard positions since high school, but it was easier to shine on those lower levels as talented as he was. 
when he came to the league, his point guard skills or lack thereof were obvious and for the most part, he played the shooting guard, especially alongside LeBron and when Kyrie Irving got there. If I had to say an on-court growth stunt for Booby, it'll be for that reason. All in all, like I said, I like Gibson. It's unfortunate everything came at him all at once, beginning with his injuries and then personally, but taking your own life is never the stand-up way to go and is a serious thing to think about. I'm happy he chose not to, as I couldn't imagine a guy with so much going on taking himself out of his glory and from his family. He's also dabbled in music, which some speculate was the reason he left the NBA, but according to him, this couldn't be further from true. Salute to Daniel, seems like a solid guy, much respect to him going forward, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out. You need to just go pick up the ball again, that's how I feel, because I need some money. You know my gifts with that pen. I know your gifts with the basketball, too. <laughs> Also, visit StunnedGrow3.com right now. We have some new winter merch for all your fashion needs. We have the Legends Edition package, the Championship Edition, and much more to satisfy your winter fashion. Once again, visit StunnedGrow3.com right now. Please like and subscribe to this video for more content. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, man. Let's get it.